This podcast will be considered a gem. Hello, boys and girls. Hi. What a wonderful day it is today in our money-based economy. After I'm dead. Well, sit back and relax and get ready for the guy who's about to ruin everything. I'm puzzled. Uh, are you really seriously suggesting that Jesus Christ was a mushroom? Wait. Yes. Jesus was a mushroom, Roberts. Yes. You are dealing with a, a secret cult, a secret society. Welcome. Welcome. To waning interest. Welcome, welcome to the Waning Interest Podcast, our number sixty-nine. Uh, unlocked Wednesday, April eighth, twenty twenty. I had to bend over. It's you know sixty-nine. I had to. I didn't. You know, I didn't mean to go together, but I had to bend down, not bend over. Bend over is a little far, isn't it? It's just bend down. Either way, it's April 8th, 2020, but I already said that. I might be, so you know, the only person who hasn't watched Tiger King yet. That's odd. Eerie almost. But I said that the last podcast, didn't I? I can't remember. Because tonight's hour is brought to you by Cafe Lolita. Coffee liqueur. Why? Because I went to the fucking liquor store and they didn't have any Kimura. And I was a little, what? Come on. And I didn't want to go anywhere else. So I said, all right, I'll take the Cafe Lolita. It, 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 it's s- similar, but I don't know. Something's missing, especially the buds. I've already had, what is this? I'm, no, this is my third drink. And the only buzz I'm really feeling is from the 420. But I could be wrong. Because uh, I did end up hitting record. And I said I wouldn't hit record until I felt buzzed enough. And, well, I guess Cafe Lolita is fine. They're not really a sponsor. But I uh, had to let you know what this hour is. What's helping me along with this hour. Which is mainly to try to distract me from that little bit. I'm, I'm kind of hiding, trying to hide it as best I can. Being in the new Waning Interest Podcast studios, which is the shed in Gator Country. The TV's a bit loud inside. Because the shed is attached to the house. And the ladies have it a bit loud. Um... Because, you know, they like sign language. So I'm trying my best to stay with my back to that wall so not so much filters into the microphone. Although some of you might be saying, that would be better than what you're doing, asshole. I would tend to agree. Um... Depending on when you're listening to this, like I said, it's uh, April 8th, 2020, so we're in the middle of the quarantemic. Uh Are we in the middle? Are we just at the beginning? Are we at the end? I don't know, but when I said end, I felt a little ping in my intestines. Either way, I don't want to talk about that. I try to keep these hours away from it, because... Uh, Well, because I am one of those that feels like it's a bit of a scam to uh, crash the economy on purpose and corporate corporate everything and get rid of a whole bunch of shit, a lot of stuff. It's a a disgusting takeover, but I also don't want to talk about it because I'm I'm still a little bit afraid of getting sick, and 
irony sucks. But let's see what's happening during this. Uh, moving military in on Venezuela, a uh, bunch of fracking being allowed, uh, pipelines, certain things. You know, just look around, look up for stuff that's not concerning the uh, core endemic. And you'll be able to tell. It's not hot. Hey, did I tell you? It's the smallest click on the internet if you're new. And that last five minutes and 30 seconds fucking proved it, huh? Right? We're consistent around here. <sighs> but yeah, oh, I don't think I finished that story, did I? I went to the liquor store. That's all they had. And I didn't want to go somewhere else because, you know, because of the pandemic. So, uh, yeah, I think I might have left that out. And uh, I... The story was better when you did, you fuck face. Okay. See? Obviously, I'm the pinball brain in your favorite machine. And I'm getting a little itchy. It is a Wednesday, so unlocked Wednesday. So that means it's a Wednesday joke and radio story day. Oh, so much fun. What the hell do I have for the radio story? What do I have? Oh, shit. I never told that story. Well, well, I haven't told it in a long time, but I've never uh, done it, like, for a bunch of people. Anyway! That guy you heard on the front, Joe Cruz. His link is uh, right there in the, on the Patreon page, right there on the homepage. Or uh, if you're on YouTube or wherever, it's right there in the, in the, in the, what is it? Notes, is it? Is that what? Description? Description. That's the word. Oh, who knows? Maybe this is survives after five years and it's no longer called description. Now it's called uh, deep thoughts. I don't know. But if you didn't know, there is a Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash waning interest. Um... Thank you to my peebles, and thank you to anybody who wants to be one of my peebles. It's pretty fucking cheap. I'm not about money. Um, oh. Um, so yeah, if you want to be one of the whips, one of the waning interest podcast pack, uh, I put my shit out, depending on where you're listening to this, um, if they're, if you're hearing, if you're hearing ads during or before or whatever, that ain't got nothing to do with me. No ads here. So, but some would say it's a gigantic ad for a handful of things that I talk about, like other people's podcasts and shit like that, and pimping other folks. And I think there's definitely, if anybody wants to try to call it me a negative person, they would be wrong because I'm pretty sure if you're really listening, I pimp a lot of shit uh, a lot more shit than I, than I poop on, than I, I poop on, for me to poop on, was that, uh, the dog, uh, triumph, the insult dog, for me to poop on, Twitter, interest, at interest waning, uh, used to be Wayne Roberts, 811, Mmm. Sorry about the mouth noises. The milk, you know, gets you a little along with the doesn't help the dry mouth from reefers as well as water. And I usually don't drink milk. Only when in a little bit of my coffee and with Kimura or Cafe Lolita. But my Twitter used to be waning, uh, Wayne Roberts 811, just like the Instagram is. Uh, but I've told the story already where I got booted, so I had to create a new Twitters. So it's at interest waning. Waning with a Y, but you knew that. I haven't touched it. I haven't done anything on Instagram in forever because I haven't made a promo in forever. I think I got a couple coming up. I've decided on that are kind of funky, but you got to have them 
under a minute if you want to put them on Twitter as well. So I try to, I hate trimming them. I like to, like with, when I worked, for, when I was one of the producers for the Ron and Ron radio show, uh, when people made promos before me, and when they did, they moved all kinds of shit around and did all this editing that I would sit there, over, stand there over their shoulder going, I don't, okay, I don't know why you're doing that. You're ruining it because if you just, because the, on the Ron and Ron show, when it came to Fez and Ronnie, it was so easy. You, I knew after, I knew from being a, a fan of the show already, but then when I had the producer mind for p- promo shit, I knew that there was always going to, there's going to be at least three or four every show in four hours every day. There was going to be three or four moments that were going to fit perfectly in a promo where it, they were going to, it was going to have four, it was going to have a great joke, one, two punch from Ronnie and Fez or somebody else, but usually Ronnie and Fez, and then like four tags. And I, you know, on the, the last good tag of the original joke, that's where I'd go, cut it right to the Ron and Ron, blah, blah, blah. And that's what I like to do with anything, you know? I didn't like, you know, moving shit around, what's the, that's not, yeah, you're running a promo. If you want, if you're, you know, if you're just trimming a little bit of fat in the middle to get something real quick, you know, I can, yeah. Or like a little bit, you got to cut out some dead air, move it up a little bit. I get it. I do that here and there, but for the most part, I like to keep it to where it's a nice setup and then bam, bam, bam. I, don't know, I think my promos kind of represent that if you get the humor, because some people don't get the dry humor, which I find kind of strange. Um, at least oh, I guess they, it's more that they can't get it the way I write it, because I'm a shitty writer, that's why I don't have a gig doing that. That's why for some strange reason this is a bit better I don't know if you can take it I can take it once after you know going through it the one time and then going back through for just a little make sure everything I don't want to bleep anything or whatever but I don't trim anything out of the hour either along with promos um, but that's about all I can take it's just uh, one another one through and look for a few promo spots as I listen and make sure it's okay to stick it out there So a little bit, uh, did I finish what I was saying? I think I finished what I was saying, right? Did I? I don't know. Maybe I'll think about it. Whatever. That's part of this show. Pinball brain. Ding, 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 ding. Ooh, you just got a free ball. I was talking to my brother. Uh, did I tell you his name is Herb? Yeah, I have. I fucking love that. Plus, he's a badass, so talking to him earlier today and we were talking about what's happening and uh some he's and he's he's like he's we're very similar he's into the same shit not quite as deep right now at least with uh certain things like I'm about to get to um but he you know he gets it and uh for some reason I used Manson as an analogy for something. And if you've never heard the podcast before, uh, when I talk about uh, Charles Manson, I don't talk about it with the full-on Vincent Bugliosi, uh, Helter Skelter, to me, mostly bullshit narrative. Somebody who not only uh, wanted to be the most powerful lawyer in Los Angeles, he also, obviously, he, he saw himself as his fucking screenwriter. And a lot of people fell for it. So, because I see more, of, I see Manson more of as a, a patsy for uh, many things, including the psychedelic movement, um, which if you go back now and you realize, oh, if you look at what they're, saying now they were saying it back then and it got shut down 
the how it helps people depression anxiety um that it's a that a, a, a true dose makes anyone put it in at least their first one as you know one of the top three experiences in their lives and you could see through walls makes you see through walls the there's a superhero thing behind it. But Manson was part of the face of that. They threw that shit on him. Um, and because of his record or whatever, but here's the thing. Think of it this way. Try to, try to look at, like I was saying to Herb, uh, and he listened, which was really cool. I said, dude, um, and he wasn't one of the normal reactions when I talk about this. The normal reaction is, what the fuck, Wayne? What the fuck? because <clears throat> they're so married to that narrative. And I used to be the same way, so I cut him slack. Herb wasn't even like that. He was just listening, and, I, you know, he got a lot. He already knew a little bit. Uh, but I just said, listen, look at it through. Watch the Snyder interview, the Tom Snyder interview, which is so heinous. Snyder is such a, was such a dick. So pathetic. Um... And just watch him poke the bear when he's asking questions and actually Charles is giving him the answers. Trying to. And he just keeps poking the bear and cutting him off. And he's just, just it's so sick. Just like the Geraldo one. They're gross. The, Ronald, the Ron Reagan interview is actually really, whoa, he's respectful. It's, oh, he's actually listening and understanding what the fuck he's trying to say. But I said, listen, watch that. But look through it. Look at it. Watch it through the lens of uh, Charles being actually innocent and just give him just an ear for a second and listen to what he's saying because if you look at the whole thing you can see that wait who committed the murders if you ask most people if you took a hundred fucking people off the street anywhere almost anywhere in the country or the world maybe but just, you know, keep it in the United States. You go grab a hundred fucking people, and the first question you ask them, some most of them might be able to answer. And a lot of them are gonna say Manson himself. But I would I would say maybe, I'm being nice, maybe thirty percent are gonna say Tex Watson. Charles Tex Watson. The real Charlie. The real bad, bad Charlie. Charlie, I mean, this is not... By the way, keep this in mind. Look through this at what I'm saying. If you've not heard it before, listen to it through the lens <laughs> or the speaker of somebody who's not saying that Charles was fucking perfect. It's through the speaker of... Um, certain facts that never get fucking brought up which is one of them being Tex did all the slaughtering and when he went to prison uh, he got to have conjugal visits write a book get married I think twice have kids he did all the slaughtering meanwhile the guy that he says told him to do it, ordered him to do it, twisted his mind into doing it, gets to sit in a box that's about the size of this shed that I'm in. Smaller, actually. For all those years. This little guy, and he doesn't get to have his guitar. Remember, just the speaker of this guy's innocent. You don't know anything yet. You don't forget the Bugliosi shit. Let's just go with the facts. And he can't do shit. He can't write a book. He can't have conjugal visits. And when he gets them, he gets in trouble. He's got everybody, basically, he has to use the money that gets thrown at him through the jail mail to have, keep himself alive because he's to bribe people to, for fucking protection. That's what a lot of that money probably had to go to. He couldn't go to much else. Now... Let's go with the f these facts that are never talked about, which is that Tex 
was a serial drug dealer slash thief, usually thief of drugs. That whole story starts with, and the FBI was actually watching the Tate Polanski house that night because they knew drugs were coming in and being delivered, which was what Tex and the girls were actually there to get. Because Wychick Fikowski was dealing drugs, and so was the fucking hairdresser dude. Uh, he did Morrison's hair, the the they call it the Alexander the Great Jim Morrison his hairdo, that's what they called it. He did that. Uh, he cut Steve McQueen's hair. Many other people. He was uh, Sharon's boyfriend beforehand and then still hung out with them. Jay Sebring. Mm. He was dealing blow. <clears throat> These are all facts. He was a cocaine dealer. They had a shipment of drugs. And, and here, the story that's corroborated a lot, but nobody ever talks about it, of course, because it would blow the bullshit story. One of the last batches of drugs that Tex had stolen, he had stolen and they were bad. It was this, I can't remember what, it, what exactly the name of it was, but it was this funky shit that uh, was around back then and sold it to this biker gang and they all got sick. I can't remember if any of them died. I'm not a complete professor on this shit because I, it's been a while. But he had to fix his fuck ups, and he was on this other drug that was with his brain. Still has nothing to do with Manson, except for when he comes and he gets ordered from what he has done already. He gets ordered somewhere else by other people to fix things. And that's when he went to Manson for help. And Manson said, dude, this is your shit. You do what you got to do. This isn't my shit. What the fuck are you doing bringing this shit here? And that's how Bugliosi did the whole twist and threw it on there. And of course, Watson went along with it. But the main deal... It was, it was a bigger cover-up of other... It was a cover-up of bigger things. And was Nicholas Schreck... Look up Nicholas Schreck talking about it. These two, three-hour uh, interviews. There's a, some of them on the radio. I can't remember what... I think Freedom Radio, maybe? I can't remember, but just look up Nicholas Schreck, Manson. And you'll find it very interesting. Because he was part of... Uh, Manson let him do a project back in the 80s late 80s or whatever it was. Anyway, if you go through it, you see it, there was no point to the whole thing and the connections to drugs. Oh, also, uh, the the older couple that got killed the next the next night, she, they don't talk about her being, they only talk about her being a victim. They don't talk about her being a fucking drug dealer. And there was something about a book that they were retrieving as well. A black book of some stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of shit. Oh, nobody talks about that. Evidently, um, evidently, well, whatever. They say that certain famous actors had to pay the police uh, for tapes that were found in the house of them having sex with Miss Tate. And some say it goes even deeper than that. So, anyway, I kind of went into it a little bit with... Uh, that's one of the reasons why... A uh, little side note. That's one of the reasons I haven't said this. I don't think... Um, I was worried about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and how they were going to portray Manson. And I thought it was fucking perfect. Because the way Tarantino did it, even though that's not the real story... 
But it kind of is because Manson had nothing to do with it. And one of the best parts was when the guy that's playing Tex, when they're in the car, and if anybody knows who Tex is, I'm also talking, they'd only, a lot of them would only know it because of the fucking movie. That movie. But before that movie came out, a lot of people wouldn't have been able to answer that, you know, that 30% thing that I said earlier about who, you know, who really did all the slaughtering. Uh, but at least the right guy died in that movie. And in the car, in that whole scene where he mentions Charlie said blah, 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 and then one of the girls questions him in the way that he says, well, oh, you thinking I'm a liar? That whole thing? Yeah, he's obviously lying. Charlie didn't have anything to do with it. With them going there. And he also, think about this part of the story where they say that uh, Buliosi has convinced most people that Manson said uh, to make it messy, blah, blah, blah. But then, and they obviously, quote unquote, did if you know as much as they actually did but then he went with them to the la bianca house the next night because they were too sloppy that doesn't make any sense does it nobody hardly any that was one of the first questions i asked i mean wait a minute what the fuck and that was way before I knew I went even deeper or had the chance to go deeper or ran into things to go, oh, 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 well, that's interesting. I didn't, nobody ever showed me that. You just knew Tom Snyder and Geraldo being a complete dick to Manson and he was just this easy fucking target. Like I said, I'm not a, uh, I did write him a letter. This is usually a bouncy, funny podcast, but that one, I did I think that was interesting. I, the way I talked about that was interesting and easy to follow along, I think. Whatever. Keep going. But again, I'm not uh, like a Manson lover or whatever. I'm just a, a lover of uh, uh, exposing patsies. Which he was an easy one because of his record. And they make it out to those, like those girls were all... They make it seem like oh, they were all so innocent before they met him. They, all the stuff that they did around him, they were already doing. But it goes deeper. Again, I'm not saying he was the greatest guy. I'm not saying that, but he didn't do what they said he did. And he, even if he had, he should have been out. If the, the law actually said something, there's something where I can't remember exactly what it is. You can look it up. I'm not doing it right now. But I think there's something where even if he was the person who just said so, he should have only gotten like 13 years or something like that because he wasn't actually there. And the whole, I can't remember, but, you know, it's that all gets lost in the easy fucking target thing that it is. Just think about that and go, wait, it's a little too easy, isn't it? How does this little five foot six guy fucking have all this power over people? Oh, because it's so bullshit. The power he had was he was fucking uh, his songs and uh, the shit that he talked about fit with the fucking time where, yeah, the corporations are fucking this planet up and look where we are now. <laughs> And a lot of those girls were, were from families that helped fuck this world up. Notice that part, too, when you do the homework on it. But anyway, Charles gets too much garbage. It's bogus. He's not even close to being a fucking Jason or a fucking Michael Myers. And it's... I can't fucking stand it, so... But cool part of the story is I didn't go that long into uh, talking about that much with, with Herb because um, he got most of it and I didn't have to go as deep I just I have to explain myself man for you especially if you're going to be one of the whips hey it's all stonandy and irony or not so he hits me back 
uh, he, he texts me a little while ago and says, just watched the uh, Snyder interview, now watching the 92 parole hearing. That, doesn't that make you, you know, when that shit happens to you, when you, you know, isn't that great when that happens? Doesn't that make you feel good? When uh, you suggest something to somebody and they get off on it and fucking let you know, oh, dude, that was cool. Especially when it's your brother. Especially when it's a crazy fucking subject like that where, you know, most people react like you pissed in their fucking Fruit Loops. Just bring, just putting Manson in a, any kind of a, excuse me, better light than he, than you know him from. Thanks to, you know, Boogly Pissy. God, that fucking guy. Oh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, that dude was a lawyer. District attorney. You think you can fucking believe anything? From that motherfucker? And, uh, what's the other part? Um, what's her name? Jeez, I can't, all of a sudden, I can't remember her friggin' name. Uh... But the the girl that was that did all the, the driving, Linda Kasabian, she got off scot free, and it was her and Charles Watson that did most of the shit. She was off her rock. I mean, that girl fucking abandoned her kid to go hang out and place. It was oh, Jesus Christ. Just do a little homework on her, and you'll be like, wait a minute, what the fuck? But the real thing about the whole thing is how great it was uh, to say, dude, check this out. And then not two hours later, oh, check that out. Now I'm checking out this. I didn't even say to check out the parole hearing, but that's another thing to watch. And you're like, wait, just look at it through the lens of... Uh, Take away all the shit that you know from the, all that all that stuff, and just just look at it from Charles's point of view. It's not against the fucking law. It's to see things all the way around. And anybody who's going to do a good job playing Charles or a character that's written like Charles, that's what they have to do. But anyway, it's gonna it's pause time right now because I need a drink. All right, all right, all right, I'm back. That was nice and quick. I thought I was going to have to pee, but nah, I can hold it. Oh, um, you're just in time for the Wednesday early joke book. I changed the name a little bit. So I was putting the notes down, and I was like, wait, what is I call it? Old? What well, used to be just the Wednesday joke? But it's actually early joke book, so why not just call it Wednesday early joke book? Which, of course, come from what I said, my early joke book. My apologies for making you feel like you're in second grade. Anyway, genital warts, costly. You know, you have to burn them off. I went through three fucking lighters. And that was Wednesday early joke. Book joke. What was I going to say next? Oh. If you're new, if you're a new whip. You heard the Jesus was a mushroom thing in the open from Joe. Not only is Jesus a mushroom, a magic mushroom, but also, to me, kind of funny, represents the age of fractional reserve banking. I mean, what did he do? You know, don't take, I'm not some religious dude 
spiritual, thanks to the psychedelics, made me understand what, help understand all this stuff and clean it off and go, oh, I get it. He wasn't a person who was a mushroom. That's why the virgin thing, because mushrooms don't need to see their spores. And he was born in a pile of cow dung. No offense. Not saying any shit. Don't ever re re misread that. He, she, mushrooms are, are uh, hermaphrodites. Which is just fine. But they don't need seed. That explains virgin birth. Blah, 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 blah. But also in the story, what was Jesus' message besides, you know, take care of the planet? being kind of a uh, green thinking person or attributes of that person, which there were many, which were the people that would say, hey, these mushrooms, <laughs> eat these, you'll sound like this guy Jesus. If you do the right dose, by the way. Anyway, do your homework. Don't just go out and do it. The other part of the story was helping those that couldn't help themselves. Bleeding heart. <laughs> People say that, use that phrase in a nasty way that wear crosses around their neck. Fucking make me laugh like a motherfucker. But not right now. And that a debt-based money. It's not real. Who, who flipped over the money changers table in the temple or whatever? Or the square, the town square, whatever the fuck. Well, whatever. Because they were ripping everybody off with the original fractional reserve banking. And see, we're moving into a new age. Even though I'm not some big, uh, what is it, zoologist? No. The, uh, you know, the, that new age shit. Even though I'm talking about ages, I'm just talking about what's in the stuff that you can go by, what they call it. And that's what's sort of a evolving, an evolution. And some would call it into the, what is it, the singularity or whatever. It's all this kind of shit. It's in that, no, in that realm. Speaking of realms, Thor, DMT. But what we're seeing right now in this evolution with that fractional reserve banking is we're seeing through the bullshit. Or at least a lot more people are, even though there's a bunch that already did. A lot more people are now. But what's the hard thing to get over the hump, as they would call it, are the folks that don't get it, that are, that don't realize, like mine used to be, because that's what's drilled into you basically is that money is the actual, has turned into the religion with the guise of being good for whatever. Of course, you can do good with it, but it only goes so far because it can always be stolen. As we're seeing right this moment, all the hard work, and that's what makes you that, that hard work. That's one of the things, one of the reasons I love that Stanhope bit about hard work. I mean, it's bullshit. They take it. They, they get. They get stolen from you constantly. Yeah, you will achieve things with hard work, of course. But when it comes to the financial part, they can pull it right out from under your rug. All the people that are going to lose small businesses right now, or have to sell the corporations at least at pennies on the dot, and they've worked their asses off. All the comedians that are constantly working that work their ass off can't do anything right now. They're stuck. There's an entertainment thing, but then you've got, you know, people with their small businesses that can't be open right now because they're not called essential. I mean, it's just, it's a fucking joke. They just fucking rip the board off. <laughs> Monopoly is not supposed to be a fun fucking game. But anyway, to me, because of that message, that's why I see not only is Jesus a mushroom, but also... Uh, representation of fractional, an age of fractional reserve banking. 
which is basically, you know, how it goes where they don't actually have all that money. If everybody went and get the money out, they wouldn't be able to do it because it's not doesn't really exist. It's all bullshit. And you paid fucking interest on it. <laughs> it doesn't exist. How much fun is that? So in this, uh, I found somebody was somebody shared this breathing exercise. So I figure I'll do the exercise on the podcast. I saw this thing with a. I don't know if he was an RN. I don't know, don't remember exactly, but I saw this video of him saying to do this breathing exercise right now. Um, and then somebody said that it's a Winhoff exercise, where you take five deep breaths. And each breath, you hold it for five seconds. And then on the sixth one, when you exhale, you cough into your shirt. So, you know, just coughing anywhere. But you would just do that anyway because it's fucking manners. Which is going to be hard right now because I just finished that cigarette. I'm like a douchebag smoking right now. But, hey. I am on the way out. All right, ready? gonna make me shit. supposed to be doing two of those. And then it went on to say to uh, lay on your stomach, um, especially if you're, you may be feeling a little trouble breathing, even if it's just uh, anxiety or whatever. So that's not just to. I guess, I don't know, I'm not just, like I said, I said it wasn't some new age thing, I saw this shit, I'm like, hey, you know, pass it on, I think it's a win off anyway, and there it was, somebody commented, and I went, wait a minute, that guy's done a lot of cool shit, so, probably does work, it's a breathing exercise that is actually kind of old, kind of like as old as, you know, from when the Jesus thing, whatever, I'll bet it's in there, it's where yoga came from, they didn't start doing yoga until after they started tripping, thank you Terrence McKenna. So I did the breathing exercise. Oh, for how long on this podcast for the whips? You already know. Have I say at the end of every hour or the few 30s that are out there to watch Jimmy Dore, listen to Kyle Kalinske, Abby Martin. Well, this whole thing with Rogan saying Bernie months ago and then 
saying Trump, and you know, he was just talking. He wasn't saying he was going to vote for Trump, but he's like, I wouldn't vote for Biden. Of course, if you had the, if you're going to really choose, but he didn't even vote for uh, Trump or Clinton in the last one. He voted for Gary Johnson, which was cool. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying Joe's right about everything, but we were born on the same day, along with John Patrizio ah, and Susie Negarella. Ah, Negarella. Well, through all that stuff on Joe's newest podcast, I think it's with uh, the Russian kid. I can't think of his name right now. Maybe it'll pop into my head. I don't want to look it up. I want to just keep yapping. Um, but a guy that's been on a bunch is always wearing a suit. God damn it. I'm looking. All right. All right. So you can look it up. So I don't forget. Lex Friedman. So evidently, uh, in that conversation somewhere, he said, you know, like he always says anyway, don't fucking listen to me. Don't take my word for everything. Look for, you know, as Joe should. And he said, you know, listen to fucking people that really pay attention to that shit, like Jimmy Dore and Kyle Kalinske. Like, Dude, every hour. And they don't even know it. I can't wait until Kyle and you guys should help. I can't go, hey, listen to my shit. You guys do it. Um, but it will be nice to, it would be nice to, uh, if they ever actually came across my podcast and went, huh, that is kind of fun. And then realized, wait a minute, at the end of every fucking podcast, he says, whatever. Jimmy reminds me of my grandpa, so. No offense, Jimmy. It's not about the gray hair. It's just, uh, you know. A lot of people would say what I just said. Grandpa, dad, like, that's right, that's right. Yeah, dad, that's cool. Dad's better. But Steph's more like a sister. Like Ron or Graham. Graham and I, Graham Elwood and I, the political vigilante, 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 he and I went to Playhouse West at the same time back in the 2000s. He did a documentary about going over and doing stand-up for uh, the troops in Afghanistan and Iraq, I think. I think he went to both, but it might have just been Afghanistan. Graham's a badass. I got good roots. You know what root means in Australia? It means fuck. I got good fucks. <laughs> He's a good fuck. They're good. She's a good fuck. It's not about being gay or anything. I swear to God. <laughs> No, I didn't just come out. That's just, uh, whatever. Move on. Okay. Oh, I did the joke. Oh, but <laughs> I was going to say, I did have this, wrote this note down a few days ago. <laughs> Some straight guys like gay porn. You don't hear this enough. Some straight guys like gay porn because they know for sure everyone is, an enjoy everyone is enjoying themselves. Yes, there is a thing called Cialis and Viagra and those dick shots and stuff. And, you know, apparently pomegranate juice. But come on. But no, for me, you know, it's, it's, it is. It gets more and more difficult looking through uh, porn and going, nah, she's, nah, she's not really enjoying it. That's why it's one of the reasons amateur porn is more popular than the old shit. You want to see people who are actually really enjoying themselves, not faking it for fucking dough. Yes, they're all getting paid, but some, you know, you know what I mean. But I guess I was, that's the, trying to be the beginning of a bit that's going nowhere at the moment. Ex except for sounding like a dude that's uh, trying to come out of the closet, but <laughs> just won't. But that's not it. Punani makes me hard. Anyway, sorry, my kid might be listening. It does. Good golly, it does. 
Oh, I wanted to tell the story about, uh, before I get to the radio story. I've been meaning to tell this funny story about, because it, uh, basically, it's this trippy thing. Because it's a real story. And it, <clears throat> it's just, it's like this a microcosm of everything. Where, at one point, I lived out, I lived in the, in the state of Tennessee, and I had an agent in Atlanta for uh, uh, on-camera stuff. That's how I got Dawson's Creek and uh, Runaway Jury and some other stuff. But one of the gigs I got, and I can't remember the actual name. It was it started with a Z. It was one of those. It was. It, was, it had to have been 04 or 03. 2003, where they hired me just to be the, um, did I write it down? Earthlink. Do you remember Earthlink? I think it was Earthlink. Remember Earthlink? They hired me to do a little photo session, and they gave me all the fucking clothes that I, they, for the wardrobe, and they gave me all that shit. Paid decent, but I didn't know how big it was going to be. I just thought it was going to be some little Earthlink you know, flyer thing. I didn't think it was going to be so huge. And I did this in Atlanta. Then I forgot about it because I had so much other shit going on and we were moving to Los Angeles and and, uh, doing all kinds of other stuff. So I'd forgotten about that gig. Especially, you know, you get paid, you move on. And uh, I'm in Los Angeles, like, not even two weeks and uh, a friend of mine from Florida said, uh, texts me saying that she just saw a picture of me in a radio shack, I think it was. And I'm like, what the hell is you talking about? I'm not sure. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. And she wouldn't... Um, she wouldn't, uh, what's the word I'm asking, what I'm looking for? She wouldn't keep going with the story. She, she kind of just cut off. I'm like, what, what the hell is she talking about? Later that day, I go to Circuit City right near Flappers in Burbank. It's not a Circuit City anymore. But I'm in there, and she said she saw this cutout of me. And I'm still like, what the hell is she talking about? But I'm not thinking about it now. And then I walk into Circuit City a few hours later because I'm going to get a phone. And I'm walking towards the phones, and I see this cutout that looks kind of like me from far away. And as I get closer, I'm like, oh, no. I can't remember what it was actually for, but I'm like, no, that's not me. But yeah, I can see why she, maybe from a distance, she might have thought that was me, and she hadn't seen me in a couple years. So, yeah, I can see why. And the whole time I'm standing there talking to this cutout of this dude who kind of looks like me from a distance, I turn around, and right behind me was a cutout of me <laughs> holding the fucking laptop with the Earthlink logo and the whole thing and and I kind of went whoa it was that was a fucking trippy moment that I'll never forget I shouldn't and uh I'm trying to remember I I think I got paid like $3,500. I was all over the country. See? Non-union shit sucks. But union stuff does too because the union's corporation now too. So blah, 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 sag after. Yeah, ain't paid my dues. Don't know when I'll ever do it again. All right, I was going to talk about hanking a bit in the last hand, but I'm going to save that for the next hour because i got to get to the radio story, which is... Um, when I was in radio school, Miami Lakes Tech, Kimba, told me to go there. I went to radio school on a lark. My dad wanted me, to, I wanted to be a pro bowler. My dad wanted me to go to, for school, go to school for something. I didn't know what, and he gave me a time to come up with something, and I still hadn't, and he, when he asked that last time, when the time was up, I just blurted out radio, and he said, okay, and I thought he was going to laugh. 
And then I went, uh, he said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to make some phone calls. I went, oh, I know what I can do. I'll call Steve Stansel. He's on from 2 to 6. He's on the afternoon right now. I'll call him and ask him. But luckily, he was um, on vacation, and Kimbo was doing his shift, who normally did 6 to 10, who I liked as well on Zeta, and classic rock at the time. And she said, hey, you should go where I went, which was Miami Lakes Tech, because it's cheap and you get on-air experience for a couple hours a day on WLRN, which is like the PBS stage radio station in every market, but it's for Miami, WLRN. And I went, oh, fuck, shit. Bam. Stayed friends with Kimba, still to this day. Or became friends with Kimba and still am. Went to that school. While we were in the school, we got two hours a day. One live from one to two. We were on LRN from our studio in at the school. They patched us in. And then from three to four, we would record an hour that they would play back. They would record back at LRN and play it back from 11 to midnight. Well, I was doing the jock thing. And I was bored. And one of the things, you gotta, one of the things we had to do was talk about local shit that was happening. And Jerry Seinfeld was going to be at the, I guess, Miami Improv or Hard Rock. At the, I don't know what the hell was going on in 94. I can't remember. He was going to be somewhere in Miami. And I decided to do a little thing where I was talking to Jerry. And I did a little Jerry impression. What? And I kind of didn't. You know, I haven't practiced. So this was when I was a kid. And this is 1994. And I was... So Jerry... Um, so you're going to come in town and, you know, I don't know, I had like these three things that I had written. And yeah, and then I talked like Jerry as best I could and it was decent. Everybody was laughing in the other room. My friends that were actually listening thought it was funny. Well, surprise, surprise, it almost got us, the school, kicked off of WLRN. Red Puddinhead, Bob Gaynor our instructor, who was the greatest. He knew. And he, not that he would told me to do something like that. I didn't okay it, you know. I, I heard from somebody, uh, once it was Phil Hendry, uh, don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness, or you'll never get anywhere. Anyway, Red Puddinhead, that was his radio name when he was a radio guy way back in the day. He thought it was clever, but he knew the program director uh, at WLRN didn't like having us on the air and was just looking for anything to boot us. And he may or may not have said, if we get booted after being angry at me and scolding me like he had to, at the end of it, I believe there was a little nod to... If we're going out, that's a decent way. At least there were laughs. I can't remember exactly, but that's why Red Puddinhead was so cool. He was right there. And the impression was decent. I haven't done it now. I didn't practice because it's more fun without the impression. Because you know the fucking voice. I don't need to do it. Not enough people do the fucking Seinfeld voice. And it was 94, so it wasn't as hack as it is today. For the story. But I hadn't told an early school story, I don't think, in a while, so. Or if at all. So I had to get one of those in there. I got, I don't know if, have I told the one about, um, now nah, get to that. Listening back, I'll know to note to put that in the ideas, if they're not already in the ideas, for, uh, radio stories because I don't know if it's on the list but it's a good one it would go right now if I had time but I like to I didn't work so much in the music part of radio it was more into the talk so I really like to hit you know the timing right out so I kind of have that in my blood but as you can tell when you listen to these, I can also hit a post pretty fucking well. But, you know, when you practice it, 
you get better. I'm tooting my own horn. I'm going to fuck it up. Watch Redacted tonight. Corporate Report, Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson, Kyle Kalinske, Abby Martin. Look for yourself. I'm just fair to be a fun lab. Blah, 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 blah. Babbling lecturer. Remember, we're all Neo, a.k.a. One. Sorry I ran long. Had to bump comedian Rodrigo Adigo Asmigo. Thanks, Gary. Daddy loves you.